I'm gonna read a scripture in the morning when it starts service right now. I'm gonna read a scripture. And the chief, no. how lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faint, for the court of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even he, even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where the where she may lay her young. Even your altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The, man, the, the rain also covers with pools they go from strength to strength, each one appeared before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield. O look upon the face of your anointed. Us. For a day in your court is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of the wicked. For the Lord God is, an, is, a, is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be with no good thing will he withhold for those who walk upright. O Lord of hosts, bless the man who trusted in you. You know, when we come to God, when we come in the house, come there's a good thing here. Amen. There's an awesome thing to worship God in the house. Amen. God gives good things to good people yeah. who serve Him wholeheartedly. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
said, Lord, you're worthy of all my praise. All the energy that I can exhaust to praise you. You're worthy. You're worthy. See, you know, that's for like, I can come and get a workout. Oh, this isn't a workout. This is practice. Look at your neighbor. Tell somebody, hey, this is practice. Say, you know, practice goes on in the gymnasium. Okay, well, that's what this is right now. Right now, this is the gymnasium, and we haven't practiced. So you're asking, well, what team am I on? Well, yeah, figure that one out. We have an altar call at the end, and we'll bring you on to our team. But what this practice is all about is in one day in eternity, we're going to step into eternity. And you're going to step into a worship that has no beginning and has no end. The Bible says the worship in heaven will stop. Best estimate is for about, what is it, 30 seconds? 30 minutes Some of silence and then worship. Listen, right now in heaven, when you and I aren't praising Him, when, when Christians around the world aren't praising Him, the angels are praising Him. The Bible says there are cherubs. They're winged, created creatures made for worship. They have wings. They cover their faces in, 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 in holiness and righteousness and humbleness. And they cover their, and they worship. And they sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with His glory. And that's what they sing as they fly and they minister around the throne of God. God loves worship, church. Why do you think music is such an incredible gift? Why do you think your voice is such a powerful thing when it comes to praising Him? Because He loves worship. He wants to hear your voice. Praise Him. Listen, I may not hear your voice from up here, but God hears your voice so clear. So clear. You might say, "Ah, oh, Pastor Phil, I, I I sing like one of the guys from uh, from the Little Rascals, Froggy." Let me tell you something, Froggy. God loves that voice. He wants to hear that voice in His praise. Cause He's so worthy. Listen, He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Come on, tell Him and let's sing it. Through. Sing it out to the Lord. He's worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
just begin to praise and just take time to be the Lord. Just right now, Lord, I want to stand in your presence. I want to stand in your presence. If your hands get tired, just put them on like wings and say, Lord, Lord, your Holy Spirit is moving in this place, Lord. Touch my life. Touch my mind. Give me strength. Heal my body. Set me free. All gracious.
Sister Sandy, uh, text Pastor. Uh, she wants to pray for her legs. Yeah. She'll be able to walk again. Yeah. Those of you that are on Facebook, text us your, your prayer request and we're with you. We stand with you today. Amen. Amen. Let's let's join, let's join hands now. Amen. Brother, we're gonna go before the Lord. The song talks about a great God. The song we're gonna sing right now. We serve a great God. Amen. Greatly to what? Greatly to be praised for His goodness. Don't forget to carry. They're still doing chemo, uh, chemo right for her. Amen. Keep her in prayer. Father, we come before this morning, Lord. Right? For who you are, Lord God, for being the great God that you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity you have given us, Lord God, to cry to you this morning, Father God. To cry to you this morning, Lord, Lord God, that you can incline your precious child church right this morning, Lord. Father, we know that you are a God that hears, Lord God. You are a God of miracles, Lord God. You are healing, Lord God. You got the healing power, Father God. We stand this morning in your promises, Lord God. And we pray and we walk with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to come into this place this morning, Lord God. For your word says, well, three or more are gathered in your presence, Lord. You are in the midst, Father God. And we know, Lord God, we know, Father God, that you are here within us this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that as we worship this morning, Lord. Our spirit will be moved, Lord God. We'll be inspired to cry to you this morning, Lord. And we pray for the Lord this morning. We pray that you bring it forth, Lord God, with power, Lord God. And clear our minds and clear our hearts to understand what God for us this morning, Lord God. Father, move in the mighty way this morning, Lord. Hear our praise, Lord God. Hear our cries, Lord God. That you deserve the praise and you deserve the worship. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Let's turn on and greet each other this morning.
Amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I, I tell you, that was some awesome worship. Praise God. Amen. I, I mean, you know that it, it is a, it's a great thing when you can just feel the anointing and the presence of God, amen, when you're worshiping. I mean, you know that's when, when the church, that's you and I, the body of Christ, when we're just getting out of the way and we're letting God use us just to sing Him a love song. Come on, amen, this morning. And how many know God, just like you and I, loves when His children sing Him a love song? This morning? Come on, give the Lord a, one more big clap off for this morning. Praise the Lord. God is so wonderful and so great. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we do want to welcome you here this morning, whether you're here in the physical body or whether you're out there in Spaceland this morning, amen. Uh, we, we just welcome you as, as a family of God this morning. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and take a look at our calendar. So if you have not received one yet, you can raise your hand. Amen. And uh, you could, ushers will give you one. Our usher is. Are we posting this thing? Yes. Where's Mona? Yes. Are we? Yes. Amen. For those of you out there on Space Night, you can see the calendar. Praise God. Amen. No, no, Space Lab. It's Space Lab. I just Facebook and stuff. Space Lab. But it's all over the place now. Not even on one venue anymore. Thank you, Jesus. But God is so great. And you know what? It's an awesome thing how God just, you know, how He moves and how He just continues to open up doors that are relevant to what's taking place. Because at the age of the internet, which we definitely have been in and are in, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Amen. How many know that uh, God gives the opportunity to be able to not only spread His word, but that folks that are far away can be part of still a congregation that they might have, have some ties to or were part of physically at one time? Uh, yesterday I was talking to my sister, actually, and she told me, I've seen you. Amen. She watches us on Sunday morning. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So, how, how many know that's a good thing? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, let's just go ahead and take a look at our, our calendar this morning. Uh, today is Sunday. Uh, Today is Sunday, and today we are having our communion uh, Sunday service. Praise God. Uh, you know, communion is a great thing. It allows us to have a, a special um, presence of God in our lives, amen, as we just remember all that he's done for us, amen, and just acknowledge that as individuals and as a body of Christ. On Mondays, as you see throughout the month, we do have our men's and women's prayer and book reading, amen. I just want to continue to encourage you to be part of that, um, if you have that opportunity, and to, and, and if you're not part of it, and you're just staying home on Mondays, uh, how many know there's a great opportunity to have a time of fellowship yeah. and a time of communion Gross. through this, this uh, yeah. uh, uh, on these Monday nights? And, oh, and definitely the opportunity to grow as an individual yeah. in a group wow. setting. And that's a great thing, because you know, when you grow in as an individual, in a group setting, amen, that team that's there, amen, is getting stronger. Them links are getting stronger. Yeah. And how many of the stronger that each individual link is, amen, how many of the stronger the overall body yeah. will be? So, you know, God using that ministry there in a powerful manner, amen, um, you know, I just want to encourage you to be part of it. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek services. This coming Wednesday, we're having a, a family night uh, word, amen. And how many know it's good when you get word? Come on. And how many know it's really good when you listen to that word? But this coming Wednesday, it's not going to be just a normal uh, family night. It's going to be a barbecue family night. Come on. Amen. So you could go in and bring your special little dishes uh, as you always do. And you know what? Throw some uncooked meat on the side. I was going to say in that dish, but don't do that. And bring it so they can throw it on that barbecue. So it's going to be an opportunity, amen, to start doing some pre-preparing for Thursday night. And what is Thursday night? Harvest Festival. Harvesters Festival. Come on, amen. You got that right. And how many know that as part of that Harvesters Festival, one of the uh, main ingredients, if you must, of that Harvesters Festival uh, festival is the candy. Say candy with me. Candy. Now, uh, last week I challenged you all to bring two bags. I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand if you brought your bags or not, amen. But if you didn't, you still have an opportunity, but you need to get them here, amen. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell it myself, I bought mine and I left them in the freezer at home. Come on, amen. 
So I, I got to make sure we get them here now. Come on. Uh, by, by Wednesday, so they can have them for Thursday. But uh, this Wednesday, Thursday, going to be time to be together, time to prepare as a family night, prepare for the Harvester Festival. Because how many know them kids that we open this up for the opportunity? They want to get some candy. Come on. Amen. They want some candy. So we got to be sure that we have enough to go around on Fridays. We have our home fellowships. Um, we have a, a list in the back where you can see me. If you're not in part of our home fellowship, it will get you hooked up there. Amen. Now, I want to just touch on a couple of other items here on this calendar, and you, we'll go through it weekly as we normally do um, throughout the month. But uh, the money for the ladies' getaway to Laughlin is due. Ladies say it is due. It is due. Uh oh, I heard one very deep lady's voice. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Ladies, your money is due. If you're part of that, you need to get that money to, to Sister Mona today. Amen. How many know that uh, uh, you got to get it in there if you want to go? That's all I've got to say to you. If you've been planning, you've given your down payments, whatever, you got to just finish that up. And uh, I know you got ladies are going to have a great time out there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, let's see. What else? You know, you, if you look down here, see on Monday the 11th, that's Veterans Day. Now, you know what, I want to sort of challenge the church here because um, my daughters at her school, they do a lot of this stuff, but Veterans Day, we normally celebrate it. I mean, we give thanks for our veterans and all that. But I want to challenge the church um, and you as individuals, us as a body, is to find a way to do an act of kindness, amen, for veterans that you know personally. Now, it doesn't have to be, you know, a corporate church thing. It could be maybe something comes up. But I think that every one of us here probably know at least one veteran. And it might be a family, it might be a friend, it might be whoever, it doesn't matter, it might be your neighbor, uh, it might be the, the grocery store clerk that you talk to through uh, as you're there. But do an act of kindness, amen. Show them a little gratitude just for their service to this to this nation. Can I get an amen this morning? Because how many know that uh, there's a Bible that it says, amen, the, the faith without works is dead, amen. So we can say we're going to have gratitude, we have thanksgiving, but how many know that it's just really nice to reach out and say thank you and bless you, amen, a little Hard kids draw a picture, whatever, amen. But I tell you, know they would appreciate that. Praise God. Um, ladies, also, our leaders, excuse me, on the 16th, leaders and volunteers, those that are part of the body of Christ here, that are workers and ministries and, and, and worship teams and in and, and, and any, and any form or fashion, it's going to be your day, amen, uh, for a breakfast on that Sunday at 9 a.m. Now the pastors, amen, are, are going to be cooking and serving for you. So I just want to give you a little warning ahead of time. If I'm serving you and I spill food on you, don't get mad at me, amen, okay? But I will be serving you, praise God. So if you're, you're a laborer here, we just want to show our appreciation and our love for all that you do in the body of Christ. Come on, give yourselves a big clap. All for this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I think that that's all that I'm going to touch on. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go to go down to the last week, starting on Sunday the 24th. We have a morning service. We'll have a celebration service that day. Amen. At 6 p.m. But shoot off to your right there on the 27th, which is the day before Thanksgiving. We have our communion service, um, and then on the 28th is Thanksgiving. Uh, spending with friends and family, and then you see on the 29th there's this Christmas decorations. How many know as traditionally this congregation puts the church together for the celebration of the birth of the king? Come on, amen. So I want to just encourage you to to don't be over full. Get up that morning, amen. On the on the twenty ninth, going to be full up so that you get up and you come out and you can get some exercise in by stretching and hanging up stuff, amen. Picking up things, we're working up working out that turkey, and that way you can go home and eat some of the leftovers. Praise God. Amen. Now, I'm going to know God is a wonderful God. Amen. Come on. He's a great God and He's awesome. Come on. Give the, give the Lord a clap off for this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Phil. Some other tortillas. It's like Mexican lasagna. Right? 
Right, and we love it, don't we? That's right, that's right. If we cooked another turkey on Friday, we wouldn't be that hungry. But when it looks like enchiladas, oh, man. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you this morning. Appreciate all the information that we got. Uh, we're just we're just thankful for all that God's doing. That is a great idea, Pastor Johnny mentioned to you, to uh, do something for a veteran. Um, you know, Sister Dee and I have always had this thing. If we're in a restaurant eating somewhere, and there's a and there's a uh, military personnel there, somebody in their in their camouflage. And I'm not just saying this so you can go buy some camouflage and get a free meal, because I know how Imani thinks. That's right, I know how he thinks. But I, I've always made it an effort. That God puts stuff on my heart. I'll pay their meal, and I'll always ask the I'll ask the waitress or the waiter. I said, "Look, could you uh, could you uh, make sure that they don't pay that bill? I'd like to pay it for them and uh, do something." Listen, God honors some incredible small acts of kindness, and, and you may not be able to buy something, somebody something like that, but you can sure. I, I, I don't. I let me remind you. No, I can't tell you that because you know everybody wears hats, and sometimes people wear hats. And they have nothing to do with what's on their head. Like, you got a Raiders hat, but you don't play for the Raiders. Raiders? Did I say Raiders? I'm sorry. You may, have a, you may have a cowboy hat on you, and you ain't no cowboy, and you don't play for the Cowboys. So I understand that people can wear those things, you know, it'll say, you know, USS, uh, what is it, uh, Mayflower or something like that. You gotta, you gotta be really old to have one of them. But be aware and do something. It doesn't take much to just be aware and do something. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but there's a lot of incredible uh, groups that are doing wonderful things to help veterans. And uh, maybe you've never thought once in a while of, uh, of sending them a $20 you know, gift just to, hey, I can't help much, but it's something. Right? Yeah. It's something. So do something. That would be an incredible blessing. Hallelujah. So let's get ready to give to the Lord if we can and uh, and honor the Lord. Take an envelope from there in front of you. I, uh, you know, man, what what an awesome what an awesome God we serve. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. How many appreciate how many appreciate the scripture that uh, that uh, uh, brother uh, brother Robert? I know his name. <laughs> Y'all in a hurry to get out of here and go home? But, but I look like a cheeseburger up here or something like that. You, know, you should have you got yourself half a donut. Kind of calmed yourself down a little bit. So relax. You wouldn't want to get out of here so quick. Got me, got me half a donut. I'm all right for right now. Right? Let me, let me uh, take you back to Psalms if you can. Go back to Psalms 84. Man, my... my uh, Something's happening in the web here. It's giving me a lot of trouble. And, uh, oh. oh, man. Thank you, Oscar. Appreciate that. Y'all thought that was me walking up here, huh? <laughs> you know what? Everybody's on the website, man. I, I can't even get on the Wi-Fi? Oh, what is it? The Wi-Fi? I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> testing. Get, get that out of, your, out of your hand. Everybody get your uh, bulletin for this month. We're, we're, we're doing everything to get you information of all the stuff that we do. Look at the top corner, top left-hand side corner. You all see that? Top left-hand side corner gives you some information. It gives you money that comes into our building fund. Okay, it gives you money that comes into our building fund. Everybody say building fund. It also gives you money that comes in for missions. What you see up there on this month was for the month before. So this is, what calendar is this month? So that offering right there was for what? October. Right, the month before. Amen. We're giving you an understanding that when we all get involved and we all do our part, you might not think your part is very much, but it matters. It matters. Um, we spent about $12,000, roughly, maybe a little more, a little less, in putting the new air conditionings in. Um, that money in the building fund, and I'm still doing it. I'm putting 20 bucks every chance I get. Um, do that for us because we're still lacking a little bit of paying off that expense on that side. I don't know exactly how much. Maybe next week I can tell you exactly right now at the top of my head. I don't know. But if there's one thing that uh, all of us can be thankful for, 
And we receive offerings here because we want you to be a good steward Amen. over your finances. Amen. And we make sure everything goes where it's supposed to go. Amen. If you give to missions, even if you send into Praise Chapel Global, PC Global, or PCI, that'll, that'll probably change over the next couple of months to PC Global. If you give directly, you send 20 bucks once in a while, or you put 40 bucks or $10 and you send it to PCI, PC International, which is where our missions go. I, will, I want to tell you, and every church is going to start doing this, be specific. If you don't specifically say where money is going, it will go to wherever it's needed. And I'm telling you the truth. You know, if, if somebody tells you, I'm going to give you $100 so you can help your brother out, you know they're giving that, you that money so you can help your little brother out, right? If they just give you $100 and say, here, I, I, I want to give you $100, you're going to use it wherever you want to use it at. You're, you're going to run off to Walmart or do something like that. You know? So you always have to be specific. Now, I say that because we want people to be specific in, in, you know, in, in the international ministries all over the world and things like that. But I say that to you because you need to be specific. If God puts it on your heart that you want to give something to, to some ministry in, in, in this church or ministry you've seen in this church, you've got to be specific on there. Now, the tithe is holy. Everybody say holy. Amen. That, the Bible says that's for the storehouse. That's what we use. And most of you know that, that we're thankful Amen. for a building. We're thankful Amen. for the blessings of God. But... Light bills are paid, and all those things get taken care of, and all those things have to be done. But always be specific. It'd be a great help, and it, it'd just be a blessing for everybody. In Psalms 84, you know, as, as Brother Robert was reading, it, it, most people don't realize there's a Latino version that he was reading. <laughs> you didn't hear the word chela? You didn't hurt Baca? So, you know, some, I, I, I remember the guy that was his last name. You know? The Bible says, verse 10, go down to verse 10 of Psalms 84. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. There used to be a song like that that we sang a long time ago. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Yeah. Yeah. Then live in the tents of wickedness. Now, now let me clarify something. Y'all wouldn't want to live in a tent. But in the time that this was written, living in a tent was a good thing. And and that that maybe not be not now, but you have to understand what, what the psalmist is saying. He's saying that I I would rather live in the presence of God than anywhere else. Amen. Verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield, and he bestows favor and honor. Yeah. Let me ask you, how many in here want some favor and want some honor? Raise your hand if you want favor from God and you want honor from God. Listen, right. amen. That, that's powerful because listen, this is where our mentality is wrong. Honor is not wrong. But let God give it to you. Yes. Don't try and gain it your, yourself. Don't try and earn it yourself. Yes. Favor, when it's from God, is a, is a powerful yes. thing. Yes. Because favor from somebody else is a good thing. Yes. When somebody treats you favorably, that's, that's a good thing. If you know somebody that, that works somewhere and, and they give you their pass to get it, that's, that's doing you a favor. They're showing you favor. Hopefully they're not doing something illegal, but they're showing you favor. Everybody say favor. Favor. Okay. And so this is what it says in the second half. No good thing, no good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk upright. Those who walk upright are the ones who understand how to keep God. Yes. First. Let's stand to our feet, can we, all across the building here? And let's get ready to give to the Lord. Let me ask the ushers to make their way down here as we uh, get ourselves together. If you've not come to the point yet where you have put God first in your finances, I can tell you only this. Don't wait 
Don't wait. You can give your heart to God, but some people keep their biggest heart right here. This one beats, but this one meets. And sometimes, yeah, and sometimes, sometimes, we don't realize God has no problem blessing somebody. He has no problems giving favor to somebody. He has no problems providing for somebody. And if you're faithful to God, God will move. Uh, you know what? I, I need to bring somebody up here. Can I bring somebody up here? Can I put them on the spot? Would that be all right? Yeah. Y'all know I do crazy things and I get in trouble, right? <laughs> brother Sean, come on up here, Brother Sean. I want Brother Sean to testify. Yeah. Because God has been good to this brother. Yeah. And I just need to let him tell you why. Gotcha. I should have snuck away to the class while I had a chance. <laughs> Got you, man. And, uh, uh, I was sharing with Pastor and somebody you've probably seen on my post. Uh, the company I'm working for, they sponsored me into the uh, Labor's Union. Man. And um, I just finished. Uh, took me four years to journeyman out. So not only did I journeyman out, my supervisor told me because I uh, excelled and I picked up quick, I'm a, I'm a good worker. Uh, he put me at level three, which you're supposed to start at level one, but he bumped me to level three just because of the fact that I know as much, if not more, than the fellows that work in there. But if I can put it all on them. Come on, Sean. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. I, I don't deserve what I have. I don't, I don't deserve to be up here. The stupid stuff I've done, the things that go through my head, and just the incident that took place Friday. I lost my cool. But I'm still standing here. Yeah, I've got to learn how to uh, just pick it up and, and just dust it off and, and deal with it. Uh, I'll make amends with the individual that I lost my cool with until the, the time comes. But um, you know, I had to get up and go to work. They called me in for an emergency yesterday, and I had to just get up and go to work. I was right there sulking in my in my stuff. But God has been good. When I came back, I didn't have nothing but a backpack full of clothes. And uh, I am where I'm at right now because God. Thank you. Yeah. 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 It's even better. It's good. I just need a little better for my stewardship because when more comes Come in, oh my Come God. On. It's like, ooh, I need that. I want that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, so I've got to stay grounded and uh, right. just continue letting God be God. Amen. Yeah. 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 Sean was 15, I think 15 years old. Was he 15 years old yeah. when he first came on? And, and, and he'd stay around for a couple of weeks. Maybe the longest was about a month. And we'd have to hit out in the streets. He'd be running on his bike, man, doing his thing. And if he told his testimony this morning, he'd, he'd, he'd make us cry. God is good. All he wants to be is first. All he wants to be is first. Let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. Brother Vince, right here in front of me, would you lift this up to the Lord in prayer? Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of mercy and grace. We come once again with a thankful heart, Father. Yes. With prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, our request, Father God, is to have favor. Yes. Favor from the Most High God. Ooh, come on. The one who does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Oh, yes. Open up those doors, Father God, Jesus. the windows of heaven, and yes. pour out your blessing, which we cannot contain. Yes. Father God, bless this offering, and bless these tithes and the pledges, God. Multiply it for your yes. furthering of your kingdom. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jesus. <laughs>
I'll walk up there, but talking about giving and our giving, 42 years ago, I gave to the Lord my son. And I gave my two daughters to the Lord. My son has been a wonderful father to his children. My daughter, Renee, she's had her ups and downs, but she's been great. She's getting ready to start in the spring of next year a nursing course. And the little one, of course, you know, she took, my, my son-in-law took her to Texas, and they're now pastoring a great church in Texas. Yeah. Desiree is now an international Montessori teacher. What, what I've taken her a whole year took her four months. And she got her certificate, and so now she says it's official. I'm able to. I'm happy to be back at the dinner table with my family, because she would come home and just hit the books, and she did everything online, and she ended up with a 4.0. She passed all her classes. No. I think she learned a lot from her older brother because he was pretty good at math and helping her with all that. But she aced all of her classes, straight A's all the way through all seven of them. And when I talked to her, she said, Mom, I, it's just so overwhelming. And of course, you know, I had to throw the fact in there. Well, Mom did teach you some of it, but she is now working with infants to three-year-olds. And she has a lot of experience because her kids are all back-to-back. -back, so. She just didn't expect to, when she went to Texas, that was the last thing on her mind. When she applied for the first time, it was, she applied for a lead, but with no credentials. The lady that runs the school said, I'll put the money up, but I need you to stay. Promise me that you will not leave till after December of 2020. And there was another lady with her, and this is where highly favored comes in the story because I said to her, and she said, she didn't have any plans of going anywhere. They were gonna send her to Huddle, Texas, which is like a half hour from her. But the lady, she ended up getting a class 10 minutes from her home, in the school, 10 minutes from her home. Um, the lady that they sent to Huddle, Texas, they sent her because she was not following the program. They have a certain type of program that they have to follow. The classroom is set up totally different than a regular classroom. It's like a home setting. And so, you know, of course I asked her, you know, being mom, send me a list of what you need. And so, you know, dad and I went and got her some stuff and sent her so she could get her classroom set up. And so she was just excited. Now it's just, you know, kind of smooth sailing. There is things she has to do, but I'm just so excited for her. And, you know, when she went, I just said, well, you know, Lord, only you know. Right. And this is her first real job. She's oh. never worked a day in her life other than being a mother. And we all know that that's 24-7, 365 days a year. And so, plus having her kids in sports and being a you know, pastor's wife and running a church, it's a lot. And she was really feeling overwhelmed. And I said, well, God will only give you what you can handle, honey. And, you know, my first instinct was to jump on a plane and go to Texas and just be with her, you know, because it's like so exciting for me. Come on. You know? But my kids have all done well. That's right. When I gave them to the Lord, I dedicated them to the Lord. It was Lord, you do whatever you need to do with my children. Is it hard? Yes. Is it hard to watch your kids go through the things they go through? Yes. You want to just take a band-aid and rub it and smooth it all over, but sometimes we can't. We have to let God take care of them. We want to pick them up. We want to hug them. We want to love them. But sometimes they don't let us. So you know what? Love them anyway, the parents. Give them what we can give them. Sometimes we want to give them a little, you know, but hey, let God do that. Amen. God bless you.
you just got to trust God. Yeah. Don't, Amen. Don't, don't, don't let your mind get all, uh, all whacked no. out with, uh, with things that, that your kids may go through and, and trouble that may happen. Don't, don't get yourself. Amen. God's a good God. Yeah. 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 God's a good God. Amazing. Glad you're here this morning. Hallelujah. I want to share uh, this morning a little bit before we have communion. Uh, something that I mentioned, actually, if you weren't here Wednesday, Wednesday, the Lord took us on a, on a trip. Um, something that had been burdening me for a while. There was a lot of information. I realized that. I appreciate those of you on Wednesdays. Wednesdays are good. Yes. Wednesday gives a, a, a pastor, it gives ministry in areas that, that we can go into and, and that, we, that maybe some might not want to do on a Sunday morning. I, I don't want to limit, I don't ever want to limit what God wants to say to us and say, God, you can only tell us this kind of stuff on Wednesday and, and then tell us this kind of stuff on Sunday. I, I just want him to be able to tell us the truth. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says the truth sets you free. Amen. That's what Jesus said. He said, if you know the truth, the truth will bring freedom to your life. It will set you free. So Wednesday was a great direction as we talked about how God is a rewarder. Oh, yes. He's a rewarder more than you and I realize. And we make a big mistake. By not realizing how much God desires to reward us. Come on. Some of you might be watching us on, uh, not space time. <laughs> but think. That's Johnny. He's, 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 him and I go back, way back to, to you know, watching the, the old programs, you know. Warning, warning, warning. I don't remember. <laughs> it's lost in space, lost in space. Yeah. Uh, those of you who watch us on Facebook in the morning, we appreciate you, and we hope that God's Word is ministering to you also. Amen. Romans chapter 1, if you can, with your Bibles, just turn there while I give you a little bit of an intro. Wednesday night, we talked about some things that are very important, and that, that is trying to, get, trying to get our minds focused on the fact that God is a rewarder. Yeah. We, we live in a world so much where the, the issue of rewarding, the issue of... You know, um, how many have ever watched the news on holiday seasons when the police department will actually pull somebody over? Yeah. Yep. Not to write them a ticket, but to bless them or to give them a, 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 a gift certificate or something for their family. Raise your hand if you've ever seen that on the news. The police would do that. Some of you have never seen that. You don't raise your hand because it's not happening to you yet. Because every time they pull you over, they want to give you a ticket. <laughs> Right? Because I feel the same way. Man. I, 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 I don't even smoke weed anymore. Thank God. But when they get behind me, it's like, well, do I have anything? <laughs> if you're past that, Lord bless you. Lord bless you. But the reality is, we, always, we are always put in check in areas like that. Now, the problem is, we make the mistake of seeing God the same way. And that is that every time God moves into our life, or every time He makes us aware that He's around, or that He's there, we're like, oh my, I, oh, I, I, I'm messed up. I, whoo, does He remember last week? Does He, does He remember yesterday? Does, does He remember today? Listen, God knows everything. Yeah. Nothing is out of His radar. He sees it. He, he knows how many hairs yes. you got on your head. Or yeah. does like one side? Or? No. He's not limited. He's not a man. Right. He's not a man. Amen. So I, I did everything I could through Scripture to get us to realize that God is a rewarder. Yes, wow. he is. The reason why God is such a rewarder is because God has implemented into His Word and into time and into man's kind, man, all of humanity. Let's put it that way. All of humanity and the existence of man, judgments. If you've ever studied, you've ever studied the Word of God, there are judgments that God placed. There are judgments that were, that were placed on man that, that go before the flood. The, the uh, judgments of God that He brought a destruction to the world and He leveled, you know, uh, with the flood. He, he destroyed everything to start over. But He saved one man. Everybody say one man. One man. He saved one man. So there are a number of places that people don't realize that the reason God is 
wanting and desiring to be so good. And the reason that God wants to reward us is because he's a rewarder and because judgment is coming. Amen. We don't talk about that a whole lot. So let's read this scripture and then let me share with you just a little bit that's on my heart this morning. Um, uh, Romans chapter 1, starting with verse number, you know what, go to verse number 18, and we'll start verse number 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he made. So they are without excuse. Let me stop there really quick. No matter who you are, no matter where you grew up, no matter which island of that you might have grew up on, that has never heard, sorry, but that's the best I could do, that has never heard about Jesus. Oh, Pastor, you don't realize, I was born on this island, and they never heard about Jesus. God has put into every single human being the understanding of what you and I simply would call right and wrong. God has put it in every single human being. You might think in your mind, even the ones that run around naked that are way over there in that little island, you're just jealous because they're naked, but they're the same as you, and they're the same as me. They have a mind, they have a conscience, they have a soul, they have a spirit, and God has put into them an understanding, uh, 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 an understanding that there is right and there is wrong. So no one has an excuse to blame the day they stand before God. Verse 21. For though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling the mo- a mortal human being or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. It has always been in mankind to worship the Creator. It has always been in humanity to worship God, the great Creator. We, we as humanity have messed it up thinking, oh, let's worship a bird. Oh, let's worship a statue. Oh, let's worship a, a big fat guy with a ruby in his belly. Let's worship this. Let's worship that. Let's worship the sky. Let's worship the moon. Let's worship the leaf. Got you on that one, huh? So claiming to be wise, mankind became fools. Verse 24, jump down. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and they worship and they serve the the, cre- the creature rather than the, cre- the Creator, yes. who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to degrading passions. Their women exchanged natural intercourse for un- for unnatural, and in the same way, also the men, giving up natural intercourse with women, consumed with passion for one another. The men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own person the due penalty for their error. And since they did not fit to acknowledge God, excuse me, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind and to the things that should not be done. In other words, God said, they have refused to acknowledge there's a right and wrong that I have put inside, a right way to live, a wrong way to live, a right thing to do and a wrong thing to do, then God has turned them over to the consequences of of their sin. We all know that because some of us remember when we were in our sin that things weren't getting better, they were getting worse. And for some of us, me for one, if the Lord wouldn't have saved me at 19 years old, I would not be alive at the age I am right now. Amen. 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 Because many of my friends did not live another 15, 20 years. Right. They died early because Amen. of the lifestyle. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, verse 29 says. Evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife. They were filled with all these things, deceit, craftiness. They they are gossip, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, 
inventors of evil. Ooh, always trying something new. Yep. Rebellious towards parent. What? Oh, You see it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. That might have been your nickname. They know God's decree that those who practice, listen, that those who practice such things deserve to die. Yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Right. Would you bow your heads with me for a few moments here? Brother David Benamontes, right where you're at, would you stand to your feet and just pray over this word this morning? Father, we come before you this morning, Father. We yes. thank you, first of all, always to be here in your presence, Father God. I pray, Lord, that the word touches our mind and our soul, Father God, that we just stay focused this one this one time that we're here, Father God, Jesus. in your presence, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you anoint the lips, Father God, our pastor, Father God, to minister to yes. the congregation, Father God. And for the ones that are going through the struggle, Father God, I pray, God, that you just help them Embrace them, Father God, and let them be hearers of the word this yes. morning, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Judgment is ugly. Yes. Judgment is ugly. It's, it's not a great thing. If, if you like watching the, uh, you know, the, uh, they won't show them a whole lot, you know, but I know in, in a lot of in a lot of countries, where, in a lot of states, even in this country, you know, there's a lot of people who like watching uh, 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 certain types of shows, you know, that, that, you know, go through the whole thing of cases and what kind of judgment is placed on people. It's it's ugly. Judgment is ugly, and, and you and I know it. Just say amen. 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 I know it, you know it, we all agree to it, and yet, and yet, we still do it yes. to each other. Come on. Come on. Can I just can I just give you some stuff and you won't hate me? Yes. Can, can you can you believe they let their kids behave like that? Come on, Come on. Sometimes we do it a lot, don't we? Sometimes it, that was my kid. <laughs> <laughs> he must have no self-control if he still battles that. Judgment. Come on. You know that barista? Ooh, that's a new nerd, new name, huh? A new nerd. Did I say that? <laughs> that's a new name. I never knew what a barista was. Raise your hand if you know what a barista is. See, you don't go to five bucks enough. Starbucks, that's five bucks. You know the store five below? It's called 420. Right? How many know the store five below? Okay, Starbucks is five and above. <laughs> you know that person working behind the counter? Man, they're sure grumpy. They should get a different job. Right? You know, I think the music in the church, it needs to be faster. <laughs> or slower. Louder. No, oh, quiet. They need to quit repeating things. Say holy too many times. They need to repeat less. What they need to do is sing better. Can I tell you something? Worship wasn't good because we practiced, because we did. <laughs> Amen. Oh my. Oh wow. Worship was good. Because yes. you came ready to worship. Yes. You see, it doesn't have anything. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Never stop happy. Side. What's that? Side. I'm gonna clap him. Yeah. Yeah. You want to clap, clap for the Lord. Yeah. 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 Halfway. Right. When you come to worship, when you come to service, it's not how good we can do it. Come on, man. It's not. It's not us. Oh, it's when you come. Heart. Your heart's ready. Yeah. Yeah. Your heart's ready. Yeah. You're focused. You want to praise Him. You want to worship Him. Yeah. Even some of you that said, "Well, you know, I'm not as crazy as that Bapu up there on the stage. I don't like doing all that kind of stuff." That doesn't matter. If you come wanting to be in His presence. Wanting to praise and knowing he's worthy of it and knowing he deserves it, then God's Holy Spirit has its way in this place. And then worship is like, oh my God, that was awesome. It wasn't awesome because we were awesome. All we do is lead. We lead you, the church. Right? They could play better. 
they could sing better. You know what? They need some horns. Sabes <laughs> que? That person has been a Christian long enough to know better. They've been around here long enough to be doing better. Or they should have just... Don't help me, Ernie. Or they should, or they should at least, <laughs> or they should at least be there. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. I don't remember where this came from. I just found it, and I'm going to say it to you, especially in the context of what I'm speaking to you right now. But it's a good saying, and it's it stuck with me for a while. I should have put it up there, but I was I was real quick trying to get my notes. <laughs> and uh, judgment comes when we identify someone else by their worst qualities and ourselves by our best qualities. Let the church just say, ouch. So the Bible speaks of the judgment seat of Christ. Some of you might know it and might have heard it as the Bema seat. Say Bema seat. The Bema seat. The Bema Seat, B-E-M-A. You've heard it before. The Bible speaks about it. We just read out of Romans chapter 1. Let me give you a little bit of, a little bit of insight to uh, what I'm sharing with you um, here this morning. In the Greek, in the Greek term, the, the, the term judgment seat is uh, translated in a couple of ways. And you find the following definitions for what we say when someone says the Bema Seat of Christ. Um, uh, in, in some of the definitions in the New Testament, uh, it's a Greek lexicon, and you don't even want to know, it's one of the big five things, not even the Bible. It says, it is a step or a pace, or a raised place mounted by steps, like a platform, or a tribune, that is used of an official seat of a judge. Now, there are places in the scripture, like in Matthew and John, in the New Testament, even the book of Acts, that talks about stuff like this. So... The Bible tells us that in the book of Romans, chapter number 14, you can write this down. It says, verse number 10 through verse number 12, it tells us, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't want to take a whole long time reading it to you. It says that we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It says that all of us will stand before the Bema seat of God. So then each of us are going to receive, or each of us are going to give an account of ourselves to God. In 2 Corinthians, I think it's a different translation, and it tells us that, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10, it tells us, you can look it up, we are all going, we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due. Say what is due. What is due. What is due us for the things we have done while in the body, whether good or bad. So in that context of understanding judgment, which we didn't, couldn't even touch on on Wednesday night, it is clear that both those portions of Scripture are referring to to believers. Everybody say Christians. Christians. Not talking about unbelievers. Now hold on, I'm going to clarify some things. Don't get all shaky on me, okay? The, the judgment seat of Christ involves believers giving an account of their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm going to give you some points that we talked about on Sun, uh, Wednesday a little bit. I just want to clarify because we're going to have communion in a little bit. Amen. You need to understand how powerful communion is, Amen. what it represents and what it means. Okay? The judgment seat of Christ does not determine salvation. Okay? Remember that. It's the first point I want to give you. That, that, that judgment seat, the beam of seat, it does not determine salvation. Okay? Salvation was determined by the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross at Calvary. Everybody say amen. amen. Okay. First John, uh, first John chapter 2, verse 2. It talks about he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You may be in church, but the people you know who aren't in church, he died for their sins. Too. Amen. The friends you grew up with that are still trapped by drugs or still messed up in that lifestyle or, or, or wherever they're at, he died for their Amen. sins too. Amen. He died for the sins of the whole Amen. world. The whole world has a gift that they have not come to receive right. because they don't believe. Because if you believed Amen. that your sins could be forgiven because of the sacrifice and the blood that Christ shed on the cross, Amen. why would you not want your sins to be pardoned Amen. and to be washed? Amen. Well, because I'm, 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 I'm still, I'm still, I still struggle. Everybody struggles. Amen. Church isn't made for people who are perfect. We don't even want you. Oops, did I just say that? For those of you on Facebook watching us, forgive me for that one. But we don't, because you don't belong here if you're perfect. You don't belong here if you've got it all together. You belong in church in the body of Christ because you need Him. We need the Lord. I need Him to be in my life, to help me, to guide me, to, 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 to convict me when I'm wrong, to speak into my life when I need something that He needs to speak to. This is a body shop. Look at your neighbor next to you and say, what are you coming for? <laughs> Y'all ever been to a body shop? You go to a body shop? You see some cars are missing bumpers. Some cars are missing fenders. Some cars look like they're okay. And you think to yourself, man, that, that must be his car. That thing looks good. Yeah, but if you would open the hood, there'd be no motor in there. It's like they're empty. Sometimes they, sometimes they got the motor, and they got the looks, and everything's good. And you watch a couple guys pushing it out and getting it out of the way. It's like, oh, what's wrong with that car? It's a nice car. Ain't no transmission. Amen. That's what the church is. Yes. Some, some of you came in here and it was just bumpers. Lord bless you. We're just having a bumper problem. Amen. Some of you came in and it was just fenders. Lord bless you. What about your little fender problem? But some of you came in here and you were wrecked. Yes. I said you were wrecked. Yes. Man, you were hit from the back, from the front, from the side. Yes. You couldn't even open the door to get out. You rolled the window down. Some of you couldn't even roll the window down. You had to scoot over to the other side. Get out the passenger end. <laughs> That's how jacked up we were when we came to Christ. It's like a hospital. You don't go into a hospital and be around, be around uh, uh, he, uh, healthy people. You go to the hospital because you're sick. Everybody in the hospital is sick. You ever notice when you... Raise your hand if you went to the emergency room in the last month or two. You remember the emergency, the emergency, the emergency room? You, you notice it is not a fashion show in there. Everybody comes in there all. <laughs> right? They don't even get their, their, their clothes like, oh my, they, they walked out like that? They don't care. They're sick. They're sick. Somebody needs to cover that up. Who cares? I'm sick. When you go up to the emergency room, you're so sick, you don't care if people are walking around naked. Okay. You look over and go, oh, I don't care. You call my name yet? <laughs> right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's the body of Christ. Yeah. We come to Jesus because we need Jesus. Yeah. We come to Christ because we need Him. We need the forgiveness of sins. We need for Him to restore us and redeem us. We need for Him to do a work in our lives because we're preparing eternity. We're not there yet, but we're preparing for eternity. But eternity has a judgment. The Bible says all our sins are forgiven. If you've come to Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse number 1 says we will never be condemned for those sins. We will never. The devil can't use stuff against you. You heard, you heard our brother talk about he had a mishap on Friday. Messed up. Said something wrong. You ever done that before? Yeah. You ever gotten upset? You yeah. ever you ever said to yourself, God, just please let them get out of the car. <laughs> it's been a long time. We've got a lot of poison in this right here. You ever said stuff like that? Sure you have. Sure you have. Oh, yeah. So I've had people get angry at me because I drive too slow. And I dare them to tell me to pull over. You don't know the poison in this boy right here. 
Yeah, that's a lot. Bad. I, I ask for forgiveness every time I think that. I say, Lord, thank God they didn't pull over. And then I look at the guy and he was big. I said, oh, Lord, thank God. Thank you, Jesus, they didn't pull over. Pastor gets his butt kicked. On the side of the 710. Number two. You should not, we cannot look at this judgment seat of Christ as God judging us for our sins. Amen. What we need to do is realize that God is rewarding us for our lives. Amen. That judgment is for the believers and the Christians who will stand before God for the things, as I mentioned on Wednesday, that God is going to reward us Amen. for. Amen. Yes, yes, the Bible says Amen. That we will have to give an account of ourselves. I am accountable and so are you. We are all accountable for the things that we have done. But part of this, part of this portion, part of this uh, coming before and answering for, for the, the, the sins that we've committed. People think that in their mind. However, it's not going to be focused on the judgment seat of our sin because our sins are under the blood. But what have you done with your life since Christ became your Savior? You see, when He washed your life and He forgave you and He cleaned the slate and He said, I'll never hold it against you again. I'll never hold your sin. Not your past sin, not your present sin, not your future sin. Say future sin. Get somebody to see what I was weak. Let me move over here. Future. Say future sin. Future sin. You get that clear in your brain because you're going to sin. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to blow it. Get that clear in your brain that the blood of Jesus, this is how powerful this is. The blood of Jesus has already, you haven't even done it yet. You haven't even done it yet. The blood of Jesus has already covered your future sin. Your sins are covered. But you're going to have to give an answer. Yes, sir. For what you've done with your life. Yes. What have you done with what God's put in your life? Wow. Boy, you know, I, I got nothing. Oh, yeah, you do. Come on. Into every human being, a gift or on, gifts man. have been placed. Yes. Into every life, there's something that you have that someone else doesn't. You might think, no, everybody has it. No, everybody doesn't have it. God uniquely put that gift. There are talents and abilities you have that somebody else doesn't. And God put those in you so that at the washing of your life with his blood, you could step into a place where you would give him. Lord, you saved me. I belong to you. Lord, you forgave me. You own me. You paid for this life. I'm going to do whatever it is you need me to do with what I have, what I know, what I'm able to do with my young years, not my old years. It's one of the things that I, I was told when I got saved many years ago. I was 19, we were 19, 20 years old. I was told by an old person that said something powerful to me. He said, he said, you have done something that is so incredibly powerful, so awesome that it shames me. Because most people give their young years to the world and then give their old years. <laughs> their old years to Christ. I can't party no more. I can't even do it. I might as well go to church start singing Kumbaya. When he said that to me, blew me away. I didn't have a, I didn't have a place in my mind for that yet. I was still trying to stop doing the stupid things I've been doing all my life. It took me a couple of years. It took me a couple of years just, just to quit swearing so much. Tired around the old tree there. Losing it this morning, man. But then you know to remind yourself what they say? Tie a string? Tie a string around your finger to remind you? Let me give you, let me give you some things that we're going to have communion right now. Some of the things that we're going to be judged on that most people don't, don't realize. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18, talks about the Great Commission. 
Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now you might say to yourself, hey, I'm afraid of flying and my car won't go so far. Jesus said, go to your world. Go to the world that you live in, the people that are around where you live, the family that are connected to you. Wednesday night I gave that quote. That I told you about my son's, uh, he got a t-shirt that had Mother Teresa's hands on it. It's an awesome t-shirt. It's got her hands on it. She, this woman had an incredible quote that says, if you want to heal the world, you got to start with your family. If you've got a vision to see the world healed and see the world better, the first place you have to start is with your own family. How many want their family to be touched? Come on, it starts with us. You, got, you and I, we have to take that responsibility. Okay? We're going to be judged by how we obey that great commission to go. We're going to be judged by how victorious. Romans chapter uh, chapter 6. If you read, I'm not going to read it. You can read from verse 1 to verse 4, I believe it is. And it tells us that we are, we are by God looked at. That everything He's put in us is so that we can have victory over sin. Amen. Yes. So that we can have victory over sin. We're going to give an answer to how victorious we were over sin. Well, when I try, how hard? Well, I act like, like that. <laughs> James chapter 3, what does that tell us? Simply, how we controlled our, our tongue. Our tongue. Ooh, you do that good. The tongue. The tongue, words. Words, life and death is in the tongue. That's right. Life and death is in the tongue. Yes. When you when you speak a curse out to somebody, right. you you condemn yourself with that curse yep. because no one no one can do that. Yep. We have a we have a need within us to realize we're accountable. The Bible speaks of it on Wednesday night. And that's the whole focus. It, it talked about receiving crowns for different things based on, on how faithful we serve Christ and, 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 and various crowns that are described in certain ways. I'm not going to go over all those notes. But it, it, it talks about the need for us to understand that everything we have and how, what our life is doing, what we're doing with our life right now, we are going to give an answer for. Yeah. James chapter 1, verse number 12 is a good summary. And I'm going to close with this. And we're going to have communion this morning. It's a good summary of how we should think about the judgment seat of Christ. It says this in verse 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test. He or she. Can you say amen? When they've stood the test, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised Hallelujah. to those who are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Let me ask the worship team if they'd come. And... One day, one day, we're all going to stand before the Lord. When I was young, I didn't think I had much. When I was young, I, I didn't think I had much to give to God. Then I remembered of all the things that I was doing through my school years. And I, I, I remember somebody telling me, if you gave all that stuff to, that, to, to, to the world back then, give it to God now. And so I did. And whatever it was. <clears throat> the Lord blessed me with Bahum. You got to be a little old to know Bahum. You got to know Felix the Cat. Felix the Cat had a friend that every time he was in trouble, Bahum could get him anywhere. There was a mountain in front of him, and Bahum would go, Bahum! And the boom, and the mountain would open up, and Felix the Cat would ride through. His friend Bahum had a big old mountain. Big <laughs> job. Some of you in here, you think, yeah, big mouth people, they irk me. They don't irk God. He wants them. He wants them. He wants to control this. So he can use this. So he can use this to let the people in the world know that he loves them. And he wants to bring a change to their life. 
Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads. We're going we're gonna to sing a little worship song and we're going to open up this altar. If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, God loves you more than you know. If you're watching us on FaceTime, you don't realize that I'm telling you right now, God loves you more, more than you love yourself. He wants to be your redeemer. He wants to forgive you of your sins. But he will not force you. Jesus said that he, he says, I stand at the door and knock. But he doesn't say that I open the door and come in. You have to open that door. You have to open that door by making a decision and saying, you know, Christ, I need Christ in my life. I need the Lord Jesus Christ. I need the forgiveness of the Son of God who died on the cross of Calvary. And you have to make that decision. You have to open that door. He won't come in unless you open the door of your heart. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He'll never shake you like a tree to get peaches and plums and apples to fall. No, no, no. You have to give him permission. You have to let him. If you're not born again and you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you don't have the hope that if you died right now walking out of this building that you would stand before God and everything would be great, then you need Jesus. You need Christ. If you're living on the edge of that hope by like one time, well, I used to. Well, I'm not sure now. That's not a good place to live. I'm going to tell you what. There's nobody in here, not even me, no one in here, has a guarantee on life. I have no guarantee that this is, this is my, my last week or today's my last day. I don't know the blueprint of my life. Neither, neither does any of us. But one day we're going to stand before God. One day. All of us. It is appointed unto man, the Bible says, once to die and then judge. Don't leave here like you came without hope, without love, without forgiveness. God loves you the way you are. Yeah. You might be thinking in your mind, I, I, I can't change. Guess what? You can't. None of us could. None of us came to Christ knowing we could change. We had to allow Him to fill the emptiness of our lives. And that brought the change that needed to happen. It was a process that God worked on. I'm going to open the altar and give you a chance before we take communion to come and talk to God about you. Not about your neighbor, not about your family, not about your friends, just about you. Let's sing it out to the Lord and take a few moments as we do this. Thank you, Lord. You are mine. You are mine. Every heart that 
to just continue in this atmosphere of prayer, this atmosphere of praise. chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, he said, therefore, my dear friend, now listen to these words. He says, flee from the worship of idols. This Cor Cor Corinth, or Corinth was a, a port city, a popular city. It, you know, it's like living in L.A. It's like living, it's like if you lived in San Francisco or a big city, you know, where, what do they say about L.A.? Crazies everywhere. Because we were some of those crazies. Come on, man. He says, I speak I speak as sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Listen. The cup of blessing that we bless, it is not the sharing. Is it not the sharing in the blood of Christ? It's the question. The bread that we break, is it not the sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. Say one bread. One bread. We who are many, we who are many, are one body. That's right. We are the body of Christ. We are the same body of Christ as all the other churches who meet, who believe Christ as their Savior and His blood atonement. For we are all partakers of one bread. Right now, when we pray, that's the bread you hold in your hand. That bread, was, that bread symbolizes the body of Christ. One day it might be a little fish. One day it might be a cracker. On, I remember a pastor telling me that uh, that they had communion and nobody brought the crackers. So he went into the nursery and he got the little kids cookies and he passed them around to everybody. It's, it's, it's not what you use, it's what it represents. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what he said. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifice partners in the altar? What do I imply then? What am I saying? That food sacrificed to idols is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No. I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not God. I don't want you to be partners with demons. You cannot, listen to what he says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can't, you can't do both. Here's a good way of saying it. You can't worship at two our altars. Right. 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 right? Some of us used to worship at, at the altar of Ralph. Right? We got carried away, we got out of hand, and we were at home going, Ralph. Now you know what the altar of Ralph is. Huh? I hope your name is not Ralph in here. Forgive me if I just. <laughs> You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table. That's what you have in your hand right now. This is what we're doing right now. We're coming to his table. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or are we provoking the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than God is? Are we stronger than Him? No, we're not. 
Amen. We're weak. Yes. Amen. And we need Him. Yes. Amen. This is why we do this in memory of Christ. Does everybody have the communion in hand? I want you to take the bread and just hold it. And I'm going to pray and we're going to take it together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we hold this bread in our hand. It represents to us the body, your body, the body of Christ, that was given as a sacrifice for our bodies, for our lives. Lord Jesus, you broke that bread, passed it to the disciples, and you told them, take this and eat it. You told them it was your body. At that time, it was probably very difficult for them to understand and comprehend. But for us, it isn't. Amen. And we're thankful we have your word, the Holy Bible, that gives us the guidance and understanding. This bread we hold, it represents your body only because we have faith yes. in you. And we're grateful for the price that your body paid before you hung on the cross, while you were on the cross, and even after you were taken down from that cross. Yes. The prophet Isaiah said it was by your stripes that we were healed. Amen. And Lord, we are grateful yes, for the Lord. sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful, God, that you came down the earth, you took on the robes of earthly man, and you became the sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God, Hallelujah. so that we could live in the forgiveness of sin. And we are grateful, and we receive that with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name, let's take the bread. Then the scripture says that Jesus took the cup and he blessed it, just like the bread. Amen. And he just passed it amongst the men that were with him in the last supper. And he told them, take this cup and drink it. It is my blood. No telling that in their minds this was a heavy, heavy, heavy revelation. Yes. They, they hadn't seen Christ hang on a cross but 2,000 plus years have passed, and we know what he did. He shed his blood. It took blood to forgive us of sin. From the very beginning, God's first two children in Adam and Eve, when they sinned, animals had to be sacrificed. God took the skin from those animals. He had to shed blood to cover their nakedness. The same example goes through the entire Bible, goes through the entire, all of mankind that it's taken blood to bring forgiveness to our sin. But we would have to have a barn bigger than the airport next door to us to carry all the animals we would need to sacrifice for our sins. Because some of you that are very sweet would be bringing small little turtle doves and, and small little animals. And some of us with lots of sin would be bringing... <laughs> We would need some big sacrifices for our souls. Amen. But we are all covered by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we hold in our hand this cup that represents your blood. And we are not only grateful or thankful, we are filled with joy. That you give something that we could not earn and we definitely do not deserve. We are only redeemed because you have redeemed us by your precious yes, blood. Lord. And this cup represents that. Yes. And we do this. We do this knowing what it means. And we do it to honor you. And we do it in remembrance of you. Yes, and we're thankful for the love that you show to us all. Yes, we pray right now. Not just for us, but for every family member and every friend around us. Help us to focus on their bringing them to you to know you as Lord and Savior. Yes. And we take this cup together. You, Just stay right where you're at. Don't move. Stay right where you're at. Close your eyes. You know, when the disciples did this, they didn't get it yet. It took them a while for them to get it. By the time the Apostle Paul came on scene, 
and began preaching and ministering, there was a revelation they had because of what they went through. You know, I thank God I was born in this time and not at that time. Amen. I thank God that you and I can have something that they didn't have. Father, I speak a blessing over this congregation, their homes, their families, the people they care about, the people they love. I ask you, Lord, that you bless them, touch them, cover them, help them, give them strength, give them courage, help them to speak for you and to shine that light that is in them. I pray for every gift and every talent and every ability that is in this house. I ask you, Lord, to touch them, give them the courage to give you permission to start using it. Lord, bless them this day. Bless them through this week. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you this morning. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's all right. God bless you this morning. Have a great afternoon.